Well, hey there, YouTube Pipe community. It's your buddy D-Dub. Coming at you with a bit of a uh, tobacco haul. And um, I want to show you how I uh, take my tobaccos and, uh, and sort of record them and log them in before I put them in my cellar. Uh, so let's jump in and take a look at what I recently procured. Um, got a handful of tobaccos here. They come from uh, sort of, I guess, three different sources. One was a uh, smoking pipes order. Um, the other was a bit of a roundup I did at some of my local uh, pipe shops here in St. Louis to grab a couple of McClellan stuff um, before it was all gone. Um, and then one other uh, tobacco that a buddy of mine um, sent to me. So uh, let's jump right in. So I was lucky enough at my local pipe shop um, they got pretty cleaned out of McClellan's. I did pick up a, a handful of Virginias and a couple other things, but most recently I got myself some of the uh, Grand Oriental tobaccos, which I'm pretty excited about because um, I'm going to miss these. And um, while they're not everyday smokes, I do really enjoy them. So I'm not going to pronounce the names. I'm just going to hold them up because I'll get them wrong. But I've got uh, one of these guys. <clears throat> Another one of these guys. One of these guys, yeah, and this one I'll pronounce the Black Sea. So, um, four of these uh, Grand Oriental um, tins. Looking forward to uh, trying all those, and glad that I grabbed them before uh, it was too late. Um, then the can that a buddy of mine hooked me up with was, just, which is some uh, Germain's Medium Flake. I haven't tried this before, looking forward to giving it a try. Uh, picked up, pretty rare for me, but uh, picked up from a smoking pipes order um, some Peterson St. Patrick's Day 2018. Um, I tend to sort of every now and again get myself a aromatic blend um, and I would say just about every time um, I regret it um, with the exception of probably um, Shortcut to Mushrooms, um, there's another aromatic that I like from uh, the Country Squire, um, and then one from, um, uh, oh, they're out of, uh, what is it, Stoff, Stoffs, or something like that, I know they're out of um, sort of Indiana and Cincinnati, um, they, they've got one, but for the most part, you know, I pick them up, I'm excited about them, I try them, and then I'm like, eh, they're alright, but anyways, got myself some St. Patrick's Day. Got myself uh, a couple tins of uh, Robert McConnell Latakia Flake. I got two of those. Picked up some University Flake while I'm at it. I always enjoy this. Kind of one note, but um, delicious stuff. Got a, I think two of those. Got myself some Robert, uh, Robert McConnell Folded Flake, which I have not tried yet. I think I got two or three of those. And uh, lastly, I picked myself up a, uh, a tin of cap stand just for good measure. Um, there are a couple of tobaccos that I just tend to buy pretty much any time I make an order so that I can hold on to them and, and throw, them, throw them in for later. Um, the rest are, are just duplicates of what I already got, um, just a couple other tins. Um, so now I'm going to show you what I uh, do with these, uh, these tins in terms of logging them. I keep a little journal. Um, to make sure that I uh, keep track of the age. Um, and I've got a couple sort of like little tricks that I do um, to help me understand what I currently have in tins, what I have in jars, um, and some of the dates associated with that. So I'm going to show you my little journal. I'll show it to you now, and then we'll get an even closer look. So it's just this guy here. Nothing too special um, about it. And uh, in it, I record sort of all the different tobaccos, and I kind of place them in by uh, blending house and then write some notes. So we'll, uh, we'll run through this um, in sort of a close-up view and I'll show you uh, some of the ways that I keep track of it and uh, the system that I use. All right guys, see you on the other side. All right guys, we are back and we are taking a look at my little uh, journal here. So let's start with, uh, start with some of McClellan's. So we've got this uh, Grand Oriental here. So you'll have to excuse my horrible handwriting. Um, but basically, 
go to the McCollin Pedro. You can see I got a little wish list here, some things that I've wanted to get from some time ago. Probably need to update this and cross off some that I've gotten. Okay. So I do have a lot, a lot of McClellans, a lot of different things. Um, and so what I like to do is basically, you know, take a look here. I'll write in, uh, you know, the kind of tobacco it is. Mm -hmm. And um, this way I can kind of always keep track of what I've got um, and uh, know what it is. And sometimes if I'm thinking like, what am I going to smoke? I actually just open up this little book and uh, go from there. So I like to take a look at this point. Um, this one's from 2014, and I know I have uh, two of these, but also I'll go ahead and I like to use the these guys here so that I can always add more if I were to get more. Now with the McCollin stuff, that's probably not gonna happen, but um, I like to use the tally marks because you can always add one if you get yourself a new tin. So 50 gram, right? And then it's from 14. So I have this little system where I write sealed S14. Um, and I'll do that. Let's see, I've got another one, I believe, of this guy. And this one is also from 14. So another sealed 14. And I like to do it that way because, let's take a look over here at um, this one right here, this uh, Piper's Choice Top Hat, right? So it's sealed from 2014. And then I like to indicate here, a circle around the S essentially means that I've opened it up, right? And when did I open it? 118, right? And so really, I know I didn't, I didn't actually finish this, but normally I'd put a little J there for jarred, right? So it was sealed in, it was a 2014 tin. It was sealed up. I opened it up 118 and then placed it in a jar. So I kind of like use that as a, a way to sort of keep track of, of what's happening. And when that's all gone, I'll just essentially cross it off. Um, but the nice thing is as you add more tins, you know, you can just write in another tally mark put another, you know, date in and kind of keep track of everything you have. So uh, I'm going to go through and sort of do the rest of these. Um, and uh, then I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> So now that I've filled out my uh, little journal here, um, probably the only other thing I'll do is on some of these tins, and I'm not sure, I don't think any of them apply, you know, I'll go through and uh, just make sure that there isn't any date code that I can follow um, to maybe uh, write in a more particular date versus just the date I got it, right? It's one of the nice things about the McClellan tins is they give you the production date. Most of these I think are probably, um, you know, fresh. Um, and so. I'll go through and I'll take a Sharpie and just write, um, you know, purchased, uh, you know, the year and probably the month even. Um, and then I take um, all of them after that and throw them in the cellar and uh, then I sort of always know what I've got, what I've tried, what I haven't, um, and, and where they are in terms of um, whether they're jarred. Um, it keeps you from, you know, accidentally opening another tin if you get, you know, sort of your jars out of control, which sometimes I do. Um, and it's really quite pleasant just to look through and say, hey, what do I feel like uh, smoking? What do I already have open? Um, and uh, it's a good way to manage things. I highly recommend uh, using a little log. Um, it's also a lot of fun. So that be it. I will check you guys later. Take care.